Hey, Mystic Michaela spiritual family. Welcome to Know Your Aura with Mystic Michaela. Today, we are doing a deep dive on how your aura colors affect your parenting style. So I want you to think about this in one of two ways or both. If you are a parent, think about how your aura colors affect you as you parent your children. If you're not a parent, think about how your parents affected you based on their aura colors and yours. You know, what I've noticed in doing so many readings, and I love reading your kids, and I love reading your parents, and I love seeing how that dynamic works in aura color is honestly, nine times out of 10, (laughs) you're given a trigger. Like your kid will trigger you in some way, or maybe you were the kid that triggered your parents in some way. And it doesn't, it's not a bad thing. It's just it's like this part of you that is either opposite or the same in the person you're raising. And I want you to keep that in the back of your mind today as we talk about all these things, because I think it's going to be really revealing for you. But first, hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. So you have a red and blue aura. Yes. And I watch you parent because you're the father of my children. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, so, but what I like to call you, like with your red aura parenting style, is is the big cheese <laughs> oh, okay. But I mean, I have a lot of nicknames. I mean, I've been called, I don't know what, Mr. Big Bucks, you call me. Yeah. I think my parents <laughs> call me BMOC. The big man on campus. Big man, yeah, big man on right. campus. I've been called a lot of a lot of names over the years. <laughs> the kids have some. I don't know, that's not one of my favorites. <laughs> well, I think, you know, with you... Just yeah. from what I see with your red aura parenting style is a lot of your own motivations. You try to like impart them on the children. So a lot of your big cheese motivations, like, hey, why don't you make the plan to get all a lot of with their social relationships? Right, like, right. You'll, especially yes, now that I we agree. have a teenager, you're like, hey, why don't you make the plan and you invite who you want to invite to go to the mall or you, you know, whatever it is, you're, you're always like kind of putting your own leadership thing on her. Uh, You know, you say like, hey, because we do a lot of activities for the HOA because you're on the the board of our community. And so you'll plan them. So we have all these like events and you're always like, hey, why don't you invite your friends to the party? You know, you can be the big cheese or whatever. (laughs) I I don't think I've ever said you could be the big cheese. I've never said you could be the big cheese. And like when Brianna gets annoyed, she's like, why is he always telling me? I'm like, he just wants you to be the big cheese, you know? Yeah. All right. (laughs) So big cheese. I yeah, so I I agree with that. I I do pro, you know be, because she's got problems, you know, as as all teenagers probably do. Yeah. And I know <laughs> <laughs> that she wants to do things a certain way cuz uh-huh. she is that red purple She's aura. red too, yeah. And like a lot of times she won't like I see it, like she won't want to do it if it's someone else's plan. Yes, that's you. And that's me. So I'm trying to give her the tips that I know will work that you know, through all the years of experience that I've had, you know, being the big cheese, whatever. <laughs> yes. So that you could do these things and within these steps, you could become like the kind of the leader of your group. Yeah. You know, you I, could you know, become the mini big cheese. Right. You know, like in high school, I was the leader of my group. I never did anything that was someone else's idea. I just yeah. shot it down. But there's there's a way to cultivate that. And you should really see... <laughs> A red aura parenting another red aura. And that's what I watch. Like, I'll just watch you two. And I'll say, like, pot calls kettle black. Like, when you're annoyed with her or she's annoyed with you, it's like you're annoyed with yourself. And that's what I mean by the trigger thing. Because you two are so alike. Like, she will not want to do something because you, simply because you suggested it yet yeah, that is how you are too like if somebody simply just suggests something to you you're like no like immediately and so <laughs> in our own marriage i mean i've whittled you down over the years to be like okay i'm going to suggest something you're not allowed to say no right away okay i'm not trying to control you but here's my idea and you have to listen but she's not there yet. She's no, a fresh and young red. That's true. <laughs> and I have toned it down. You know, yeah, you, you, oh, yeah. You, you've talked to me about it. And I have toned it down. So I, I now like don't I try I try to not do these things anymore. I, I yeah. do like before I speak, I try to say, okay. <laughs> so sad. Yeah. Like, you know, because like, you know, she also wants, you know, extra spending money. You oh, know? Yeah. So I tell her kind of ways that you could do it working, you know, getting that for yourself. But right. she doesn't want to hear any of that. No. So I'm just trying to give her ideas, but I don't give her those ideas anymore. Right. Like, and, you know, look, we've, we've found common ground now. 
me and my red. We watched Gilmore Girls. Okay. We found common ground. This is. We, we found common I, ground. I'm upstairs. I'm paint the picture. I hear howling laughter. Okay. Yeah. I walk downstairs. I have Scott and my teenager watching Gilmore Girls together, laughing hysterically, eating like <laughs> junk food. <laughs> you, That's how I pair You are. But you're, <laughs> you're obsessed with Gilmore Girls. You it, are. You talk about it all the time. I'm going to tell you. I started season, the end of season five. <laughs> that's where I gave it up. I gave it up in season okay, five. I, you picked it up in okay. season five. And we're getting a little off topic here, but okay, yes, that's fine. Yes, this is off topic, yes. But <laughs> I started at the end of season five. You know, Brie happened to be watching. She's watching it all, and I just yeah. happened to ca- catch an episode. Okay. It is the most horrific, horrible, <laughs> I can't say enough show I've ever seen. It is so, so bad. It, nothing ever happens. The dialogue is the absolute worst. <laughs> It, there, there's what they expect you to believe is is just ludicrous. But like this is overtime, right? Yeah, this is overtime <laughs> in the first segment. But, but, but because of that, because it's so horrific and nothing yeah. ever happens, the show is great. It's fantastic. Well, who's your favorite character? Well, I, I love the diner owner Luke, who's and a red blue. He's red blue yeah. too. It's and Luke he's always red, grumpy. Yeah. And yeah. he's always like barking. He goes, yes. He makes a lot of points you kind of agree with. And he makes a lot of points I agree with. And But, th- like, his character. I, I can't even get into it. Okay, all right, all right. But anyway, if there's an overtime, we could get into okay. it. But the Gilmore Girls. But Random. We, but yeah. I, feel, I feel like we found common ground this there. This is you and Bree's common ground, yeah. And that's actually been helping my parenting with her. You know, in the yeah. middle of the day, I'll text her a, a funny line from Gilmore Girls yeah. in you know middle of her math class. And she thinks it's great. Well, I think for you, like, when your kid has problems... Yes, I do. That's my other thing. I try to fix all the problems. You're a red aura. So I notice with red aura parents, a big thing is like, you have a problem? Here's a solution. But sometimes people just want to sit in their problems. And especially when they're 13-year-old girls. They might just want to sit in their problems and they don't want solutions so you can get frustrated, I've noticed. Well, that happens with with all three of you. See, Um, all three of you. Really? Yeah, I try to fix like any time. Like, oh, well, yeah. Because, yes. I mean, there's always like a, a comment. And then I guess I take that comment to heart. Like, because like how many, like all day long, I'm hungry. I'm this, I'm that, whatever. Like, I guess that's just what you guys do. Yeah. But every time <laughs> you say it, it's like, okay, now I got to go. And, like, it always like triggers me into action. I feel so bad. So, like, I didn't if, know that. Yeah, that's what I figured we that out. We complain all day. Yeah, you guys are complaining all day <laughs> long. But between the three of you, there's there's a complaint every like Three minutes. That's how we communicate. And in my brain, it just triggers like, okay, she just said she's hungry. All right, what am I going to do? Let me f- try to figure out. Like, I'm trying to find solutions. Oh, my God. This is an to, insight. Yeah, to every single complaint. Okay. I'm trying to find the wow. answer. Wow. But honestly, like the three of us, I think that's how we communicate. We just see each other and we just start complaining about our lives to each other. Like, my foot hurts. I'm hungry. Yeah. No, like, yeah. Today <laughs> was hard. Oh, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I have so much homework. So, like, this is how we talk. E- exactly. So imagine, like, you're on a road trip. You're in the middle of nowhere, and like there's like I gotta go to the bathroom, I gotta eat, I'll do this, da da da. You know my Wi-Fi is not working, so like everything's coming at me, <laughs> and in my brain I'm trying to get everything. That's so stressful. I'm stop, to, stop solving things. Yeah, don't I try, worry That's about my it. thing. I try to solve everyone's Oh, that's issue. so sad. We should give you some sort of word when we're serious about you okay. solving it. Yes, that would actually help. Yes, we'd be like um, serious problem, and then we complain. Yeah, but otherwise don't listen to it. Okay. That's yeah, that so would sad. actually really help because like I'm always yeah. then like as soon as like someone's like I'm hungry, all right, I'm like all right, I'm trying to think of my brain. How could I get to this location or whatever? What are we gonna do? But yeah, okay. And you're sense. blue too. Like I think the way that you're blue is you want everyone to be happy all the time. I do. Like you the, always try to control everyone's happiness. The thing, the, honestly, I'm probably not the greatest parent. <laughs> oh, that's not true. <laughs> no, no. Oh, you're such a good dad. Am, no, that's a, not I true. Scott, a, stop. I'm like the biggest red pushover too because of the blue. So I'm like a big pushover too. Oh yeah, you, you're so like you're whatever a huge they pushover. want. I'm like fine, you know. I, I I know. Even if I'm like at first like no, you then, don't have consistent discipline. No, 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 I'm better at that. I, yeah, you're the yeah you're the stronger of the two parents. Well, I don't. Yeah, maybe because I I don't want you know maybe because they're girls. No, I, I'm, I'm gonna I just think say it's because they're girls. I'm gonna say but we'll that. just say that. Yeah, I don't know if I had because I don't have any boys, so I don't I don't know if I'd be different. Yeah, but with the girls, you know, it's like. They just like say it in a certain way and it's like they wrap you around their face. Yeah. But then you freak out randomly. I think I your red know. kicks in every once in a, once while, in a while and it's like I have no control more here. On, more on Brie though. I I, I mean okay. literally for Abby, I think I my whole well, life wait, I think I've been she, mad at her once. She's seven. Like, well give once. her give yeah, her a seven. minute. One time I got mad at her because she stood up when the car was moving and I had a freak out on her. <laughs> like she stood up well, that's, while the car was driving. That's normal. And I had a freak You're out. But other than that, out. I don't think I've ever 
I mean, she, yeah. You care too much what they think about you, too. Yeah. Like, you really do. Like, would you think me as an indigo, I'd care more? Like, you care more. Right. About what they, like, think about you and, and kind of... But maybe that's back to your own parenting or something. I like it to be calm. Yeah. I really do like it when it's calm. And yeah. you don't like to push them on, like, academics and things like that. No, because no. you were pushed, so I yeah. feel like that's your own kind no, of thing. I never thing. do that. Yeah. yeah. I never check on their stuff. All right. All right. Let's do an ad. We come back. Let's talk about an indigo parent. Okay. Hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. Guess what's for dinner tonight? What? Wild grain. Oh, my God. <laughs> my favorite. I love every... No, he I, does. No, honestly. I. This is 100% <laughs> true. I love every single item, croissants, the chocolate croissants, so the sourdough good. bread, the pasta. Every. I love it. It's just like my favorite. It's amazing. Like, if you don't want to do so much takeout yeah. this year, but you still want to eat healthy and conveniently... I'm t- go to Wild Grain. I'm telling you, um, their stuff. My favorite. It's, just, it's just really my favorite. good. We had okay. Oh, <gasps> the, okay. There. I mean, they have pastas. Yep. Their bread. Everything's great. Okay, the pastas are great. The breads are great. are great. But let me tell you about the chocolate croissants. The best. <laughs> like when I, I put them in the oven. I took them out. All of a sudden, my entire family was just like around me. Yeah. Everybody got one. We all sat down. It was biting into heaven. Yes. I All can't right. describe this, it to you. We're done. We're done with the, the podcast today. Let's get some. <laughs> let's get some of this. It's not even joking. Wild Grain is the first ever bake from frozen subscription box for sourdough breads, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries. Unlike typical supermarket bread, Wild Grain uses a slow fermentation process that's easier on your belly, lower in sugar, and rich in nutrients and antioxidants, and very filling. Every item bakes from frozen in 25 minutes or less. Plus, for every new member, Wild Grain donates six meals to the Greater Boston Food Bank so you can eat good and do good all at the same time. To kick off the year, Wild Grain is offering delicious products such as an ancient grain sourdough loaf and fresh artisanal fettuccine pasta. All you have to do is sign up at wildgrain.com slash KYA and choose which type of box you want to receive and how often it's easy to reschedule, skip, or cancel. Plus, for a limited time, you can get $30 off the first box plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash KYA to start your subscription. You heard me free croissants in every box and $30 off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash KYA. That's wildgrain.com slash KYA, or you can use promo code KYA at checkout. Hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. All right. So let's look at you now. Okay. okay. So you're purple and indigo. Yeah. Um, now, I don't think we have a nickname for How come we don't have a nickname for you? I don't know. You guys gotta are, get, is there, is, do you have a nickname? I don't think so. You guys got to get on that. I'm the only one that gets these nicknames. <laughs> it is a big cheese. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe that should be the new Jumanji word. Like instead of Jumanji, we play the big cheese. Have right? you heard the big cheese? No. No. Cheese, right? no. Okay. <laughs> All right. So how does the, the purple and indigo play into your, like the indigo, let's say, play into your parenting? I don't know. I think like I'm, um, I think I, like I, oh, I try to mind read them. Okay, so you're you're kind of like psychically <laughs> parenting. I think I do, but I think a lot. Don't all these? I mean, doesn't doesn't all of you listening? Don't you all do that too? Like I, try oh, I'm sure to, a lot. I'm sure a lot. Yeah, these are intuitive I, skills. I, my big thing is how how are they thinking? Like I I know how my kids can think. Like I jump in their little brains. Okay, so you're jumping. And I'm into really them. good at knowing they're lying to me. <laughs> yes, you are. You always know this. I always sound like you're lying. You don't want, you don't want anyone's lie to you. I, I mean, I don't, I can't lie to you. I'm really good at that. Yeah. But I'm really good with the kids. Like I can tell. Yeah. So when you, they're lying. Right. The little ones. Yeah, you always to tell I'm always like, oh, okay, that, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm like, they're lying. That's a yeah. lie. Yeah. I just totally lied to you. And I know their little motivations. And, and so I think I try to use my empath skills a lot to jump in their, their brains and their emotional states. Okay. And I, I do really, I do try very hard to understand their perspectives. So I'll jump into them a lot to try to get their perspectives on things and jump back out to be like, okay, like, should I be worried about that? <laughs> or is that a problem or whatever? They get annoyed with me a lot. Yeah. they, they Yeah. Well, I mean, you're doing more of some hands-on things that, you know, I guess that I don't do. Which is what I say all the time. Like they get annoyed with me, but 
I'm the one like, hey, brush your hair, right. take a shower. Like, you can't wear that. It's got a huge spaghetti stain on it. So they're like, you're annoying. Like, so yeah. I get a lot of that. So when they say things like that, I don't care because I have to. Because right. if I don't do it, who will? Like, that's my job. Like, I think some of my, as much of a people pleaser as I am, that part doesn't bother me because I know I I have to be hated a little bit or, you know. They have to be a little frustrated with me, otherwise yeah. I'm not doing my job. Right. I have to sacrifice my being the favorite, which I, I think you that. get a lot, than than the other. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yes, and you are doing the day to day thing. Like for me, I don't ever. I don't think I've ever told either one of them to brush their teeth or yeah. hair. Or, and I'm like or, homework person and yeah. all that, so I I think I take on a lot of that stuff. You do all that stuff. Yeah, but I mean, I guess that's what I try to do, and I try to back off. Like with Brie, I've tried to back off and give her room and space to make her own choices and things like that. And I think a big thing is, especially as she's gotten older, it's not giving so much advice. It's just listening for okay. Like, oh, and I think that's the difference between me and you. Because I, and I'll tell you, like, do not say anything. Just, like, she's talking. Just listen. Yeah. You know? Well, I think, okay, so with you and Brie, I think, because she is that red. Yeah. And she is a little bit, like, abrupt. Let's yes. call it abrupt. Yes, we'll yes. say abrupt. Yeah. And for me, it just comes off as like, okay, you know, we get into little tiffs about it. Maybe. Well, she's got an attitude, but she's a teenager. Right. right. And I think for you, you take it more personally I than do. I do. You take it like very personal. Why? Like yeah. if she like has like a tiff or says something to you. Yeah. It's like kind of, I don't know, well, abrupt it's just, or it's whatever just you want. mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you you like really take it that's personal. That's my indigo. And like hurts your heart. It say. does. I think that's what you always say. Yeah. Sometimes I, I have to watch my guilt using. Yeah, and yeah. I'm more like just like all right, all right, grumpy. Let's let's just move on with this. Yeah, yeah. I don't take them. I don't take them like as personal. Yeah, that's true. That, I, I think that's a big difference. I think another thing is is I Bree especially has taught me not to care what other people think of me as a <laughs> yeah. parent because I've always been so good and like invisible and well behaved. That was me my entire life, and then. I got this kid who, yeah, who she'll call you out and yeah. more like she doesn't really call me out, but she'll yeah. call you out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like just, she's, and, and also just when she was smaller, she was the one hitting another kid or, yeah. or having a temper tantrum in public or something like that. And so that had to teach me like, you know what, this isn't about me. It's about her and, and trying to manage it. So it's like, you know. That, that's been the challenge. The cha- yeah. Being an indigo, raising a red. red. Raising like a different personality. Is tough, yeah. Yeah, because she's not, she doesn't have the same motivations as I do. She doesn't care what people think as much as I do. Right. So she, so it's kind of like yeah. working around her motivations. Yeah. And I think she knows that too. Like she, she does she know knows that. that. Yeah, she knows that. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got Abby, who's the purple turquoise. Right. Who, you know, she's just one ball of kind of like emotional here. Yeah. And she's always kind of like telling tales and she's got like this whole perspective that just kind of comes from her own way of thinking that right. we all have to kind of agree with. Right. And usually for me, cause like I know like she'll get upset. I'll just be like, okay, yeah, that's right. Abby. Right. That's right. And then, but you'll mo- be more challenging with her. Yes. Which is actually maybe a reverse there because. Well, I have to, yeah. because like she'll rewrite a narrative if she's insecure about something. Right. So if somebody was mean to her at school and I know they were, she doesn't want to live in a reality where somebody was mean to her at school. So she'll make up that she spoke back to them or something. And I know she didn't. And this person's still probably just being mean to her. So I have to get in her head and tell her that's probably not what happened. Did it, you know? And then like, it's touchy. So we're working on that. Okay. Um, but it's just, yeah, I, I feel like, Every day for me is different with them because it depends on what they're going through. And then I try to, yeah. but I think we're all doing our best. I'm yeah, sure. No, I, I think we, I don't, we've never really ever had a problem. I don't think with each other's parenting. I mean, I think, no. I, I, and it's funny cause I actually give you the lead. I really give you the lead on it. Yeah. And maybe because again, maybe because they're girls and if they were boys, maybe I would have, maybe it would have been a little different. I don't know. Yeah. That I don't know. I'm, I can't, I can't say, but I think I do give you a little bit of the lead. You know, we always back each other up. I think we do. I think we always. I think our, I think our colors complement parenting. Yeah, we do. Okay, With me being the red blue, you Wait, being the so purple indigo. Give us ten years, but yeah. and then they'll tell us what we did wrong. Oh yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I I am sure they'll tell us everything we did wrong, and then I'll try to defend it. And you'll probably no, just be like, I will. okay, I'll validate it. Yeah. I think like and the, I'll try to defend myself. You know what? Doing all these readings just to sum all this up. 
I read so many people and we're humans raising humans. We're going to mess up. Yeah. We're go- There are things we're all doing that we don't even know we're doing right. that are probably like subconsciously like, and they're harming the kids or whatever. If, even if you're the best parent ever, you're going to leave some residue of yourself on them and it's going to be their job to separate from it. And I think what makes the difference is if one day they're like, hey, you know, this affected me this way when you did this. It's just saying, oh, I validate you. I can totally see your perspective. Gotcha. Instead of being like, that didn't happen or whatever. So I'll validate them when they tell me how much I messed up. I'll try not to be so (laughs) argumentative and defend myself. Okay. (laughs) All right. We got a couple ads and then you're going to come back and do parenting in aura color. It is the new year, so why don't we have a fresh start with our skin? When it comes to clean beauty, Osea is the pioneer. They've been making seaweed-infused products that are safe for your skin and the planet for over 26 years. Let me tell you, I love everything in Osea. Right now, my two things that I cannot live without are the Ocean Cleanser. I use it every morning and every night, and the Hyaluronic Sea Serum. Oh my gosh. It, I put it on my face. I feel tightened. I feel renewed. I just feel moisturized immediately. It's, it's really lovely. Um, all of Osea's products are clean, vegan, cruelty-free, climate neutral, enriched with seaweed and made in California. So you can feel good about what you're putting on your skin. Plus they're clinically proven and consumer tested. So, you know, they work. Um, Osea, Osea's TikTok famous Undaria LJ body butter is next level body care people. It uses ingredients normally reserved for your face like seaweed and ceramides to transfer dry, crepey skin to smooth, soft, and supple skin. So important for winter. It's thick, unbelievably rich texture, absorbs instantly, and feels fantastic on your skin. So start the new year fresh with clean vegan skincare and body care from Osea. And right now, we have a special discount just for our listeners. Get 10% off your first order site-wide with code KYA at OseaMalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. Head to Osea, O-S-E-A, Malibu.com and use code KYA for 10% off. Your New Year's resolutions can extend to your hair care too, especially if you've been dealing with a flaky scalp. Well, flake free is the way to be in 2023 with Waze new anti-dandruff shampoo. I love all of Waze products. They help my hair feel thicker and fuller. And I always just feel amazing using them after because they have such top-notch quality. And I know that dandruff is a huge concern for many people. It's very common. And Waze new anti-dandruff shampoo keeps your flakiness at bay. You can do more than drugstore with gentle shampoo that takes the rough out of dandruff. Formulated from their Cape Town fragrance with notes of ginger and spearmint so your hair smells as good as it feels. And after 28 days, 100% of participants agreed that they saw fewer flakes and their scalp felt less itchy and irritated. So you can do more than drugstore with the new anti-dandruff shampoo from Way. Go to the Way T A G O U A I dot com slash Aura for 15% off your entire purchase. That's the way T H E O U A I dot com slash aura. How do we parent in aura color? I have been wanting to do this episode for a really long time. I actually did your child's aura on episode 78. And a lot of I really love doing that episode because seeing auras in children. That's probably the most authentic way you can see an aura around somebody. It's just exactly who you are. That's why I really, especially in the last, like, I want to say year and a half or so, I make sure I get a picture of you as a kid if I'm doing a reading for you. But, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's so pure. So thinking about yourself as a child 
And I thought that was really helpful in that episode because that's what I told you guys to do. If you don't have a kid, think about yourself as a kid. And if you do have a kid, think about yourself as a kid and think of your own kids. So that's episode 78 if you want to go back to your child's aura. But I really wanted to do parenting in aura color. If you're a parent, how do you parent based off your aura color? Like how is your aura affecting you. If you're not a parent, that's okay. How were you parented? Thinking about how your parents or the people who raised you, how did their aura colors affect you? How, how did you, how do you still carry some of that energy with you today? And just thinking about that different context, different perspectives, you know, if we can, if we can just see something different, if you can just it's kind of looking like looking at a piece of artwork. They tell you to walk around. They tell you to get different angles. They tell you to give different perspectives. I like to do that with our lives. The more perspective you can give yourself, the more ways you can see, oh my gosh, insight, ideas, realizations, opportunities to take your power back and your control back. So this is what we're doing today. It is thinking of yourself as a parent, if you are one, thinking of how you were parented, how it affected you. And here's the deal. This is just to narrow, because I mean, I don't want to be here for four hours and neither do you. (laughs) I had to narrow it. So this isn't, there's other things that affect us with our parenting too. Okay. There's traumas. I mean, I do so many readings for you guys and obviously I'm a parent myself. So I know there's our own traumas. There's things that happen to us. There's our own fears. There's there's so many variables that affect you as a parent. Today, I'm just talking about auras, your innate energy, and we're doing it generally. So there's positives, there's things we can work on in all of us, but I'm just keeping it to the aura colors today. Okay, and not so it's not like trauma and how trauma affects you as a parent. This is how your aura colors affect you as a parent. And what's interesting is I always see this. I they go hand in hand anyways. What I'll tell you what what's going to usually happen is the way that you are traumatized in any other in any cert, any way that you are, it's going to latch onto your aura colors in a, in a weird way. So you'll probably see that anyways. Okay, I hope that makes sense. But let's start with red. And let me tell you guys, I am very organized today. I put each of these aura colors in categories. So the categories are how each parent. Uh, how each aura color parent deals with respect, control, discipline, consistency, motivation, vicarious living, and triggers. So let's start with red. So, you know, red auras generally, you've heard me say this a million times, they just tend to have leadership vibes, take over energy. Um, They're confident in their ability to take over and be the leader. And that is no different from how they parent. So a lot of dealings when you're a red or a parent, I notice it's very much about respect. They're looking for this mutual respect with their kids. So if you do it, I'll do it. So this is, you know, this is very, it has to be, if I will, if you will. So teaching your kid respect when you're a red or a parent, that's a big deal. Um, If you don't have a kid, (laughs) if you have a kid, like let's say you're raising a purple, or a kid and they're starting to, they're like, oh, you're trying to control me. Okay. I'm going to be disrespectful. You know, so the biggest thing is sometimes how you see the world is not how even your kid sees the world. So you always butt up against that with everybody, but especially your children. But anyway, so respect, that's a big thing. Uh, Control. If I'm the one paying for it, if I have the label of mom or dad, I'm in charge. I get to say that's kind of a cons- I mean, red aura parents, I would say, are your traditional ideals, I guess, in our American culture of what like like a parent is. So they kind of go a little 1950s on you. I have to say, like, hey, I, who who paid that bill? Okay, me, I did. Therefore, I get to tell you what's happening. Um, so they're very much like I'm the parent. Therefore, I win all the time. Discipline. You know, (laughs) red auras, they're kind of funny. I put down here, like, fear my random rage. I get this thing with red auras, like, they can take a lot, and then every once in a while, they just, like, blow a gasket. But if you do that without consistency as a red aura parent, what happens is, is your kids, I mean, they figure it out, and they're just like, eh, so you'll blow up, and then you'll get over it, or whatever. So it's kind of, like, random rage, but it can be very 
I don't want to say scary. I want to say like effective. Like every once in a while, if you're a red or a parent, you might lose it in the absolute most effective way. You can't, you can't use it all the time, but when you do, it does work. Okay. I do see that with red aura, with red auras. Um, kind of a more balanced red or apparent. It's just like a very consistent, and this is consistency. It's very, it's a very much a consistent form of being. So kind of like, Hey, you know, you already know how I was going to respond. So why did you do that again? They red or as, as parents make themselves very clear about what their expectations are, how they expect you to proceed, how they view the world. You already know how it works. I've, you know, they're very clear at the, at the top of something. Like I said this, and I, and I, you already knew what my expectations were. So why did you deviate right there? Why? And they'll pinpoint it on you and they'll say like, why did you go rogue on me right here? Let's talk about that. And so that's kind of their discipline slash their, cons- they're very consistent with their discipline when they're balanced, when they're not, they can kind of freak out on you randomly. Overall, I would say red or appearance when they know they're correct, they will not back down and they don't care if their kids are pleased with them or not. So if you're a red or a parent and you're like, listen, like on Saturdays, you wake up at 6 a.m. and you mow the lawn. That's what you do. And I never have to tell you to do it. You just always are doing that. And if it's, you know, a Saturday and it's 8 a.m. and the lawn's not mowed, you're in trouble. You know, that's it. It's very clear cut. So it's kind of the, the consistency, the discipline. It should be ingrained in you. As a kid, if you have a red or a parent, motivation. Now red, and we all do this. Everyone does this. And I think this is like a big thing. I mean, I do it. We all have to, this is why I put it in for each aura color, (laughs) how we ourselves are motivated in life and how we pass that off onto our kids. And what's interesting is our kids aren't motivated by the same things that we are all the time. It doesn't, it doesn't always line up. So anyway, so red auras as parents, you can usually find them motivated by competition um, and something that we call in my house being the big cheese. That's okay. So what, what I mean by that is like, hey, don't you want to be the one that invites everyone to the mall? Don't you want to be the one that organizes the party? Don't you want to be the one that, you know, gets everyone together and wins the game? Don't you want to be, you know, they don't always want to be the one that's the leader, but you can kind of, don't you want to be the one that wins? Don't you want to be the one that comes in first? Don't you want to be the only one that stood up and said something? So that's like a very red or a motivation. Uh, their need to be leaders, their need to win, their need to make a stand, their, their need to stand up to injustice or something. That's not always the kid's thing, though. Vicarious living, another thing, like all of us as parents, we have to be careful of how we live through our children. Um, and it kind of, with red ores, it's like, be the best, win, be competitive, be a leader, don't be a follower, um, don't let others tread on you and speak up. So they can kind of push their kids, no matter if their kid is, let's say, an empath or a kid like a blue purple, and they do not want to speak up and they do not want to be the leader and they do not want to stand out and they just are fine with being a follower. Like that is something that uh, red, sometimes red parents, when they're not aware of it, can push a lot of their ideals on their kids, you know, live vicariously through them this way. And triggers for red or parents are kind of like, well, it's disrespect. That's a big one. They don't like that. Being controlling, meaning when kids throw emotional wrenches into it, like I am having a temper tantrum in the checkout line because you didn't buy me a candy bar. Like red or are like, no, we're not playing. We don't do this. No, I'm not following. Like they don't like that. But they really don't like when their kid's a pushover. That's a big thing for red or is because they work so hard to identify manipulative behavior in other people and and be be the people who kind of stand above it or speak out against it. So when they see their kids getting pushed around, that can be a huge trigger for a red parent. I mean, it's a trigger for all of us, you know what I mean? But for a red or it's like, why didn't you just speak up? Why didn't you punch him in the nose? Why didn't you? It's like, maybe that might not be your kid. That's you. That's not your kid. Okay. So that's red or a parenting. And, uh, yeah. It's, and some of that gets like real twisted up too. Sometimes with gender, it can get twisted up. I talked about that a lot in the gender auras and gender episode. Um, I mean, how many times have I seen some red aura dad 
not know what the heck to do with this blue aura sun. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, you go fight him. Nobody should talk to you that way. Go, you know, it's like, eh, he's like you know, he doesn't care. Like you do. All right. Blue parents. So blues, as we know, they're very focused. Blue auras are very focused on healing and helping and kind of being like invisible buffers and helpers. And they like a lot of peace and they like to feel needed. So when you're a blue or a parent, like you constantly want to feel needed. Oh my gosh, do you need me? How do you need me here? How do you need me there? Um, so the respect with a blue or a parent, it's very important. Like, hey, I'm really nice to you, so you be nice to me, okay? So they think that there's some sort of like, if I'm so sweet to you, why are you mouthing off to me? I don't get it. I'm so nice to you. I make your lunch. I folded all your clothes. I put them away. I take you to school. I gave you lunch money. I did all these things that nobody did for me as a kid. So why did you just mouth off to me? Wow. And then they start taking it personal because they're like, I was so nice to you. So why aren't you being nice back to me? So respect with them is just be nice. Um, and as we know that, you know, sometimes you have to, you can't just expect people to treat you the way you treat them. You have, especially when they're your kids, you have to like, okay, lesson time, <laughs> you know, like, so that can be hard for blues because they can internalize it and make it about themselves somehow. Uh, because blue, blues already have a hard time feeling respected in our whole world. I mean, every job blue auras have is usually like a job where there's just innate disrespect. I mean, nurses, teachers, I mean, therapists, like what all the jobs that people usually don't get paid enough for the amount of work they do and abuse they take, like our blue aura job, then it's no different in parenting. So it's kind of like, hey, wait a second, I got to stick up for myself, even with my kids sometimes, you know, so it's kind of not internalizing it and not expecting your kids to be nice to you just because you're nice to them. It's like you have to tell them to be too. Control. I, you know, with blue auras, it's like they really want the peace of the home to be controlled. They want it to be peaceful all the time. So they don't like when people fight and, you know, they don't like when there's conflicts between different family members or whatever. Uh, and, and, and that's fine. But when you do that too much, what happens? It's really hard then for siblings or, you know, maybe your kids and your spouse or whatever to, to learn how to deal with their own relationships apart from you. So blue auras end up buffering a lot in order to control the peace of the home. So they'll be the buffers in emotional relationships. They'll triangulate a lot as parents. And that's, and they'll do that with friendships too, like with their kids' friendships, or they're like, oh, I, I, you know, that's what's happening at school. So I, you know, you know, there's a certain age you don't do that anymore. Like, you know, your kids are in middle school or something. You don't, you know, so-and-so didn't invite, you know, my daughter to the, I'm going to get involved. Like, no, you have to let everybody else do it themselves. So they have like a control thing with the regulation of emotions. And that's the other thing. Like what happens is over time, sometimes with like the unaware blue or a parent is your kid's subconsciously don't want to upset you or make you feel unsuccessful as a parent. So they just always pretend they're okay. And so I'll see like kids who grew up with like a very blue or a parent who's kind of unaware that they just need to be needed so much or they need to feel successful by way of their children being without problems. And these, these are, adult children who like don't they can't break up with somebody or they can't change their job or they feel like they can't take risks or they can't do normal things because in the back of their mind they've connoted I guess like upsetting you or causing problems is bad and it's something that you they have to break out of but a lot of people don't notice that they're going through it so just something to notice if you're a blue or a parent you're like my kids can mess up and it doesn't mean I'm a bad mother or father it's just something to think about taking yourself out of it. Discipline with blue auras. I mean, it's a lot of guilt. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you talking to me that way? You're, you're breaking my heart. You know, um, victim, I, I'm guilty of this too. It's a lot of victimization. Like I do everything around here and nobody bought me a mother's day gift. Okay. That, I mean, but did you ask for it? Did you put yourself first? Like what, what kind of environment do you have in the household? where nobody thought to do that for you. Time to change things, time to speak up for yourself, time to sit everyone down and tell them what's up, you know, so kind of things like that. 
I work so hard. I do this. I do that. So they can get into the guilt victimization thing by and make kids react that way because of it. Consistency with blue auras. If I'm consistent, you don't have to be. It's my job. This is like my blue aura, kind of how they view consistency. It's my job to avoid moments that you'll mess up in or make a mistake. So I see with blue aura parents, they're very consistent about being, it's kind of like what I said before, like buffers. And they're the ones that are still packing their kids' lunches or the ones that are making sure that consequences are avoided for their children. Like they're consistent so their kids don't have to be consistent. So I don't know, I don't just see them being buffers to in, in like relationships for their for their kids. I see them being buffers to just how the world gives them natural consequences too. And same thing happens, like it kind of makes the kids not learn things. That they should. Okay, motivation. I think a big thing with Blue Aura parents is that, like, they're very motivated in making others feel good. You know, so so they are so concerned with making other people feel good that when they have kids and then they see their kids like kind of doing them, it can be like, oh my gosh, you have to make you have to make me look good as your mother. So you have to be kind and you have to share and you have to do this and you have to fit in and you have to give the child the toy or you have to do. So I can see them sometimes pushing their children into being like them, which can lead them into people pleasing behavior. And also I can see blue aura parents out teaching their kids subconsciously to outsource their happiness based on other people's perspectives of them. So what happens when a blue aura gets like a really tough kid, you know, like who's just, you know, they're just born that way or something. They're just a little bit more than maybe they get a red aura kid. Maybe they get like a purple aura kid and that kid's just like, no, I'm, th- I'm not sharing this scooter you know, or something. Whoa. The blue aura does not handle that. So they can sometimes break a little bit, uh, like the aura of one of their kids or or make, make their kid feel wrong for being who they are. So let's say a blue aura parent has like a purple aura kid and the purple aura kid is just like, you know, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like, I don't want to play with my neighbor. I don't like them and we don't get along. (gasps) That's mean. That's mean. You should. And I'm not saying like, we should all be nice to each other. Yes. But there's also this other thing where like, well, we have to respect how our kids view things too. And if somebody doesn't want to play with somebody because I don't know, maybe that person was mean to them or they don't like how they play or something. It's like, okay, I'm not going to make you do something just to be a good person. Sometimes we have to listen to them. How do blues do vicarious living? Uh, You know, be good, don't stand out, share, be the best kid. Which is fine if you have like another empath, if you have a blue or a turquoise or an indigo kid, like that's not going to be hard for you if you're a blue or a parent. But if you have a kid that's not like that, and all of a sudden you're getting like all the teacher calls or the other parents are like, hey, your kid hit me or something. <laughs> your, kid, your kid hit my kid. All of a sudden it's like, oh my God, what did I do? And it can be very, and this is goes into the triggers for blue aura parents when their kid actually, I guess, uh, yeah, comes against their own people pleasing things or the or when when they have a kid that doesn't align with the blue or a parents insecurities and stuff like that and they go off it can really stress out the blue or a parent it's just like if if you have a kid that was is tough and then all of a sudden your whole life you've been really good and everybody's praised you for being good and whatnot now you're now you're the mom in the playgroup with the kid that's like throwing crayons at everybody yeah, that happened to me. So anyway, so that's, and then you're like, oh my God, here I am. And you either tell your kid to be different, which of course you have to do, tell them to behave, or you tell them to be different and you also be like, hey, I welcome this discomfort. It's teaching me something. By the way, I did red, I did blue. I am not the perfect parent. This is just what I get from doing reading. So this is not me preaching to you at all. Trust me, I am 
always learning things. I'm trying to constantly learn things. I always uncover new things about myself as a parent. So I, this is not coming from me in any sort of way as the perfect parent because I am not. And I think my teenager will tell you that. <laughs> but, like, but like this is what I have noticed from doing a lot of readings and stuff like that. I just want to put that out there because I don't want this to be like preachy or anything. More helpful. Okay. Let's say you're a yellow aura parent. So yellow auras, as we know, they like to improve systems. They like to plan ahead. They enjoy creating beauty in the world by maximizing the structure that, that it's in. They like to make flow, flow effortless. They like to kind of understand what's coming down the road so they can plan for it. And when they have kids, especially little ones, I want to say yellow auras. This is probably why a lot of yellow aura moms, like in our culture, stand out as, oh, how does she do it all? And the rest of us are like, when we see yellow aura moms, we're like, oh, that's, I wish I was more like her, you know, like that. Because they do, especially when the kids are little, they have it figured out. I, I got it. It's like slow clap for the yellow auras. <laughs> They're the ones getting their kids to bed on time and stuff. So how do yellow aura parents do parenting? Well, respect. This is how we do things. There aren't any alternatives. I feel like like with yellows, it's very clear with them because they know their own mind better than a lot of other aura colors. They make it very, I guess they make, they, they make it very clear to their kids, like this is how we're doing it. And there are no alternatives. There just aren't. And for the most part, I mean... On the And just so you know, like when I read Yellow Aura Moms, on the outside, on paper, like these moms look like I don't know, a 1950s poster child of a mother. On the inside, they're struggling like the rest of us, by the way. But that's kind of like their mindset. This is how we do things. There aren't any alternatives. So I don't even know why you would bring something else up, child, because this is what you how you already know is happening. And you give me right respect by going along with it. The way yellows control, you know, you do it my way in this house. There's no room for your way. Now, this is this is where yellow auras can get have a little trouble as our kids get older because what happens is is you have as a yellow aura have your way of doing things. All right, so you know maybe this is where socks go and this is how we do laundry or this is you know these are how the activities are going to work in our house you know as the kids get older they start doing activities or these are the meals we're eating every week i shop on sundays we eat this on monday da, 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 you know whatever it is and and that's fine but sometimes you're going to have a kid that needs to do something in their own way. And it might be orderly for them, but not orderly for you. Every single aura color is organized in their own way. So when you're yellow aura, you don't always understand there's more than one way to be organized. So they need kids, kids of yellow auras need spaces where they can have their own idea of what organizes. And that's it. And I think that that can be a problem with some yellows when they don't give them that room. Like, this is what you're wearing today. No, that's not what I'm wearing today. Okay, wear what you want. You know, you got to pick and choose your battles. With When you're a yellow aura, you can't have control over everything. Motivation. Oh, discipline. Discipline. They're very consistent, yellow auras. They're good with kids. And I'm going to tell you something. They're good with fur children, too. Whenever I read <laughs> dogs or cats, like pets of yellow auras, I swear they always show me the yellow aura person in the house is the one that's like the best with the discipline or whatever. Anyways, very consistent. They don't matter the explanation. Like I, you know, I don't care that you think it should be done this way. They're very firm. I think yellows have to be careful because sometimes they can go silent treatment a little bit, especially as kids get older. Um, they can be like, eh, I'm not, I'm not talking to you if you don't do it my way. Like they can get a little stubborn that way and put up their, their yell no wall. So they have to be careful with that. Motivation. I feel like yellow or a parents have a way that they feel like things should be done rather than how maybe the kids want them to be. Maybe, you know, your kid, you know, it was really important for you, for your kid to be in dance for like years and years and years. And then your kid's 16 and she's like, nope, I don't do it anymore. And I get it. Like as a yellow aura, you're like, we spent all this money. We, we, we committed all this time. You know, you only have two years left you know, like, let's just finish it out. And 
that it, it can be really hard for them to wrap their head around something that doesn't make sense for if their kid just decides, no, I don't want to anymore or something. And that's just one example. But I, that's a big thing with, with yellows. They have this motivation to finish things out the way they feel like they should be finished out or done. That doesn't make sense. That's not how you do it. It's kind of like singing 99 bottles of beer on the wall and stopping at 97. That's how they feel like sometimes if somebody doesn't follow something through. Like, that doesn't make sense, you know. And But when you have kids, guess what's going to happen? Something that doesn't make sense, like, every day. So yellow auras can have a hard time with the, with people throwing a wrench in things, which is what children do. Um, consistency. You know, very easy. Very easy to know what's going on with yellow auras. They're, they're pretty consistent. They'll probably send you their calendar. They're not very flexible, but they're very consistent. And if you don't, if you're like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that, they'll make sure you can. <laughs> like, they're like, oh, I just moved eight things around so you can still do this. See you there. You know, it's really hard to get out of things with the yellow, which I think is funny. Vicarious living. It's a big deal for yellow auras to look good on paper because they have such an awareness of what they look like to other people. And they have such an awareness of what makes sense logically, like in the, in the big picture. So they can give, they can feed this to their children a lot, which, you know, is good in one way because they probably have kids that are more kind of like readily planned for the world, but bad if if somebody doesn't want to do something like that. Um, And the other thing I noticed with kids, with with, uh, yellow aura parents and kids, they have an adult's point of view on a child's life. So they tend to push their kids harder in the childhood years because they have this advanced, I guess, foresight into the future. So like if their kid's in a sport, they might be pushing harder. If their kid's kind of academically minded, they might be pushing their kid harder. Than, no, we got to get you in here. We got to take this class. No, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. They might over schedule them or over uh, plan them or put them in positions where they're constantly thinking from an adult's point of view, the child is when they're not instead of a kid's point of view. Again, it's good. It's prepares them for the world, you know, but it, at the same time, it can take away some of the randomness of childhood or, or the experiences of childhood. Triggers wait. Um, I mean, triggers disorganization can be seen as disrespect, like a messy room, it's just a messy room. But it, some yellow auras are like, why would you do this to me? I went to Pottery Barn Kids. I got this whole setup for you. Okay. I got the matching this and the matching this and the matching this and the matching it. And you put unicorn stickers on your wall. Wow. Okay. But like sometimes they can, <laughs> like we don't share the dream, you know? Um, what else? Oh, kids going in against the schedule. Oh man. I see this with, okay, you yellow auras, you know, you had one kid if you, if you're a parent or you could have been the kid if you're not a parent to your parent, if they're yellow that went against the schedule. Now I will tell you yellow auras out of all the auras, their kids go to bed on time. Okay. But they always get that one that won't. And I swear you'll get that one little baby. If you're a yellow aura and you have kids that is like, I'm not doing it. Like they figure you out like week two. And they're like, I'm not, I'm not doing your sleep schedule, you know, and they get you. But that's funny to me because it's a trigger for yellows. They're like, oh my gosh, you know, they're getting their sleep, (laughs) their sleep therapist on the phone or they're like the sleep apps for children or do what do I do? Do I, they're the ones on the Facebook things. Like, do I let them cry it out? Like, do I do this? Do I do this? Do I get up every 20 minutes and do this? Like, I don't know. Like they're just what do I do? It's a big trigger for them because they feel like they're losing control when it's just your kid screwing with you. (laughs) Who's probably not yellow. It just cracks me up. Um, Oh, and as they get older, I'll see the kids of yellow auras just doing rebellion without logic. They're just like, oh, hey, I got this really ugly tattoo in a a place where you can't cover it up. It's like, why'd you do that? It's like, I don't know. Just felt really good to mess up your schedule, to mess up your, to just like shake you. So that's the thing like with yellow auras, you want to give your kid enough room so that they don't feel like they have to upset you in these ways. Uh, I don't know. Yellow aura parents, they, they, they crack me up because things really bug them. And I think the kids figure it out, but then they come back and then they're like, I don't know. I always see like yellow aura grandparents make a huge comeback 
when their kids have kids and all of a sudden it's like, oh my God. And then you end up moving in and fixing their life when they're adults anyways. Okay. If you're a green aura parent. All right. So we know green auras, they can be a little like, they're, they're not, they're a little like yellows, but they're less detail oriented. Like yellows are very much like on top of your details where green auras are kind of more, they're still methodical, like a yellow, but they're more kind of like outward. They're kind of more about the, the bigger scope, the bigger brush strokes of life versus the little fill in details like yellows are. But green aura parents are big into the overall system, logic. Sometimes I say like green aura, especially green aura parents, they have this like the 10 commandments of the green aura. They're like, this is how life is. Follow my 10 commandments of me. Like they figured it out. I don't know who downloaded it into their green aura brains. Like this is how I've given you the secret to parenting children or something because they have it. They're like, oh, no, it's very easy. This is what you do. Um, And they're so sure of themselves. Okay, respect. Makes sense. That's kind of how you show the green aura parent. That's how they sense respect from you. Like, please, it makes sense. What's the point? Do it the right way. By the way, the right way is the way I told you from my Ten Commandments of me. And don't deviate. So that's how you show respect. It's like, follow my commandments because they're universal. Somehow I was given them. Um, I don't mean to pick on the green aura parents. They're really good listeners. And I I will see like a dip. I guess like there can be a difference sometimes between green aura fathers and green aura mothers a little bit. Just because gender always plays a role into these things because of our society and just different roles and things like that. But yeah, it's kind of like the same thing. It's like, but this is how it's done. So why would you do it different? You know, and, and why are you doing it different? Is that on purpose to disrespect me? I don't get it like that. Control. Once I give my take on things, that's the way it should be. Like if you came up to me and you asked me as a green or a parent what I should do and I told you, okay, follow, you know, like follow my advice. Um, I feel like green auras get really annoyed when people ask advice but don't follow it and they will not keep doing that. They'll be like, as soon as they notice that that's something that you do, they're going to disengage. They're like, I'm not giving you advice anymore. I'm just going to like ignore you. Even if you're my kid, (laughs) because like I told you and now when you didn't do what I said and natural consequences gotcha, uh, I can't have, I can't feel sorry for you because you did that to yourself. So they, their control is kind of, I want to say it's, it's a little bit, how do I put this? Like impersonal or something like they're not so micromanaging on you. They're just kind of like, well, that's what I said. Okay, now go do that. Discipline. You know, if they say it once, they're not saying it again. And that's it. It's kind of what I just said. Like I told you, I'm not saying it again. And if somebody Let's say I told you not to climb that wall. You fell off the wall. Okay. I don't, what do you, go get your own Band-Aid. You know, and they're not mean about it. It's just like, I told you so, like that. And it's not nasty. It's just a little bit like, but what else did you expect? Like, what else did you expect? You know, and that's their way really of just trying to teach you common sense. So, yeah, I guess it sounds mean, but it's, in their in a balanced green aura, it's not. And then I will say, like the kids of green auras tend to have a lot more common sense, um, physical confidence too, and they're very independent usually because they're raised with people that are like, okay, like go do it. Here are your tools. Go figure it out. You know, work on it. Come back to me if you need help, but don't deviate from what I said. Like that. Um, motivation for green aura parents, logical, practical, you know, do things the right way. Uh, don't waste, don't waste good advice. Uh, follow a purpose, follow a passion. What I notice with the motivation with green aura parents is they're very authentic with their passion. So let's say you have a green aura parent and they love to fish. I mean, that's their thing. So they're going to work really hard to get their kids to love it too. And, And I'll tell you, this is where it gets kind of catchy because kids just want to spend time with you. So they don't care what you're into. And green auras are really good at getting people involved in their own passion. So, you know, if, if you're a kid and maybe fishing's not naturally your thing, but it's your, it's your parents thing. Oh man, you love fishing. And those become like your best memories or camping or I don't know, building a deck 
one summer or something like that. It's like, yeah, this is great because it's the vibe that you're on with your parent. So with green auras, when they're on a great vibe, they want to bring their, and they can, you know, they really usually, especially when they're balanced, want to bring their kids into it. So I see their motivation is to get their family to really love whatever they do as much as they love it. And it doesn't matter what it is, honestly, because you're just on that vibe with them and it just feels good. Um, consistency. They're very consistent. And their logic is burned into your brain forever. <laughs> if you have green aura parents, that's it. You already know you do. You hear them in your head all the time. You hear their little sayings in their head. When something breaks in the house, you hear a little, say, like, go figure, get a, get a book, watch YouTube. You can, don't hire a plumber. You can do this yourself. You know, you, ha- you hear them in your head. Uh, you can do this yourself. Fix it. So it's just in their, in your brain forever. They burn it in there. Vicarious living. Green aura parents, I notice, uh, they kind of, it's like a copy paste thing. So I'll see this, you know, I work in finance, you work in finance. Here's my family business. This will be your family business. I am a doctor. You are a doctor. Kind of like that. I am an engineer. Now you will be an engineer. Um, they don't always look to see what your personal preferences may be or what you're good at. They kind of think, and the other thing I noticed with green aura, green auras in general, honestly, is they don't always know that what they like, other people don't. They're like, why wouldn't you love this? Why wouldn't you love being an electrical engineer? It's like the best job ever. <laughs> you know, it's like, why don't you? Have any-? So they don't always get that. Um, <laughs> funny, green auras. Anyways, so they can push like a copy paste kind of thing on their kids, which can be really hard. And I'll say like for green, the children of green auras, especially if the green aura parent is super successful, it can be a tough act to follow. And I'll see a lot of green aura adult kids being like, subconsciously feel like they're constantly failing if they didn't hit the level of success that their parents did, their green or parent did. Triggers, wasting time. They do not like to see their kid wasting time. I mean, life choice changes at random based on passion and ideals with differ from their own. Like, hey, dropping out of electrical engineering school, I'm going to a fashion institute. Like, what? <laughs> like, like, that's stupid, you know? And they'll just tell you, like, that's dumb. And you're never going to make money. Yeah, I maybe not, but I have to do it. They they can kind of butt heads on on things like that. They just don't always understand um, how emotional motivations play into life changes, and that can be a big trigger for green auras. And honestly, it just comes from them being like, "Why would you want to make life harder than it is? I already figured out for you with my ten commandments." Okay. If you're a purple aura parent, now purple auras have a really hard time with society telling them what to do. Okay. They're creative. They're kind of rebellious. Intuition for them is logic and emotion is also just, I mean, that's normal. It's like their emotions are real to the point that society always doesn't call emotions real. Well, purples are very into their emotions and they respect their own emotions and they respect other people's emotions as good reasons to do or not to do things. So like, I can't, work in this job because I don't like it anymore. Okay. That's a great reason. You know, whereas other aura colors might be like, Oh, do you have another job? Or like, that's not a good reason. Or a lot of people do what they don't like to do. No, that works different for purple auras. So as parents, a big thing with purple aura parents is they like authenticity with their kids and they like to be honest about feelings. Sometimes purple parents can be a little bit TMI with their kids especially when stuff's going on. Now, it's always important, I feel, just from doing readings to tell your kids what's going on as mu- if something's going on as much as you can to the point of it being like developmentally appropriate for them because kids always know anyways if you're going through a divorce or something like that. Like, they know. The kids know, okay? But it it's always be- – like, purple auras don't lie to their kids, which is good, They'll, but they might sometimes be a little bit, like, too honest. <laughs> Like, they might give details. Maybe the kid didn't need to know that. Um, But that's just how purple's are. So respect with them is kind of, I'll tell you the truth, you tell me the truth. So it's a lot of authenticity, emotional feelings, kind of like, they, they don't like when their kids hold back feelings especially when they know their kid's moody, which it gets worse when the kids are teenagers because they don't, they'll pick when they want to share with you or not. So you know your kid's in a mood and you're like, what's wrong? And they're like, nothing. Oh, that bothers the purple because they know there's, there's something 
and they'll just poke at it. Okay. Control. I think with purple parents, they're very big on the vibe. You know, it's like, why are you pushing me when I'm stressed? Like, you know, why are you trying to push my buttons? Don't add to my stress. Like, you know, things are hard for me right now. What are, why are you adding to it? Like, what's your pro? Like, uh, kind of like understand my vibe. They kind of want their kids to know where they're at emotionally sometimes. Um, and, and they can kind of control their kids this way. Like, this is not the day to act out on me. This is not the day to do this. This is not the day to do that. So they can control when their kids are going to have their outbursts or their emotions based on their own emotions. So sometimes purple auras can put their own emotions first because they're so strong over their kids. It's just something as a purple you have to watch out for. Discipline, I mean, it really does vary on your current mood as a purple aura parent. Like, I don't know, some days it doesn't bother you. Some days you're going to freak out at them. And usually the kids understand <laughs> that about you. So it's hard to be consistent when you're a purple aura. Uh, and then honestly, sometimes with with and this just goes into consistency and discipline, I guess, at the same time. It just depends on your mood, your energy level, your emotional state. And like those yellow aura moms are putting all their kids to bed at 7 p.m. I mean, maybe that's not your, maybe you don't need that as a purple. Maybe that's not as important to you. Maybe you don't care if they stay up till 9 or 10. Like maybe that's just not something that bothers you and you maybe think it should bother you, but it doesn't. It's best just to let that go. Like, if something doesn't bother you, like, move on, you know, within reason, obviously. Um, motivation for purple aura parents, closeness, emotional honesty, everyone's on the same page. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to be honest. I think that's a big thing with them. Vicarious living. Purple auras can get big on their kids being unique. Um, stand out. Don't, don't kind of don't fit in. Don't be manipulated. Uh, they do. Purple auras are very aware of manipulation with people because they're so intuitive. So they don't like, you know, that it's like mean girls or clicks or, you know, people being rude or people setting you up or stuff like that. Um, they can try to make their kids be a little more feisty than they might be, or they can try to make their kids fit in or more popular than they might be like that kind of thing. Triggers when their kids don't listen to their own advice. Like I told you that I told you your boyfriend was no good. Why are you still going out with him? I told you that or whatever. Um, not listening to warnings, gut messages, and feeling left out. Like if their kids feel left out, they can get really upset. Um, social stuff can really trigger the purple aura parent, like if your kid's not invited. I mean, it bothers all of us, but I think with purple auras, you read into it deeper. You're like, man, that mom, I knew it with her. She had it out for me and my kids since I met her. Like you kind of go into the rabbit hole because you can, because you're kind of always psychically reading people. And it's just something to be aware of. Like, whoop, I don't have to do that. Let's just do face value today. And not, I think like when you're a purple or a parent, you have to wa be watchful of your drama and keep it separate from your parenting and keep it separate from making it part of your kid's narrative. Ooh, that's hard to hear, right? I mean, we all, like, that's the thing. Like, like I said, I'm working on all this too. Okay. If you're an indigo or a parent, like a lot of the blue stuff, okay? A lot of the stuff I said about blues, but I'll try to get some more stuff for indigos. I mean, respect. I mean, indigos are kind of, they're like wallflower parents, they don't really want to come out. I mean, hosting their kid's birthday party isn't some sort of great time for them because they have to talk to everybody. And then I think the thing is, though, then they feel bad about themselves. Oh, I'm such a bad mom. I don't want to host my kid's birthday party because I don't want to talk to everybody. <laughs> but you do it anyways. And it takes a lot out of you, you know? Um but then you also like beat yourself up the whole time. Like I should be enjoying myself. <laughs> so I make small talk with everyone from the class. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, respect. I mean, I think with indigo parents, the vibe of the house is super important. I mean, this is a big thing with indigos. Like do not bring your off vibe in my house. It's disrespectful. That's kind of everybody. Like your spouse comes in if they're in a sour mood. If the kids come in there in a sour mood. It's like, excuse me wipe that mood off of you <laughs> so they can get and that's kind of the control too so I'll do like respect and control like it's respectful to an indigo aura to have like a chill vibe 
<laughs> but it's also controlling of them to want everyone to have a chill vibe because indigos can feel everyone's mood in the house so much. They can get a little micromanaging of everyone's emotions. So if someone's having a bad day, they like are like, wow, why are you bringing that to me? That please remove it. Discipline. Communication for indigo parents, super important. They really need their child to understand their intention. So they're kind of the ones that are like, you know, I sent you to your room because you said this and I just need to talk to you about it. And, you know, sometimes your kids are just going to be like, I hate you. Like, they're just going to say it. Like, if you have a kid, you've heard that, you know, they're like, and I feel like for an indigo parent, they're like, oh, it's like knife, like it's a dagger to their heart. But blue or is too a bit. It can be like a dagger to your heart. Whereas some of the other color, like purples are like, yeah, all right, cool. I'm happy. Or yellows are like, I don't care. Greens. It's like, what? I didn't even hear you. Red or is it's like, oh, I'll show you hatred. You know, like they, like with indigos and blues too, it's like, oh my God, you, you hurt me. It's almost like when I punish you, you have to agree with me. And they're not going to. So it can be very difficult with discipline. And then the indigo aura can get very upset. Motivation, balanced comms, and peaceful family vibe. I mean, they're really good with creating close families. Indigo is maybe not super social families, but very close families. <laughs> Consistency. I gave it an eh. Eh. Um, they're very consistent, but under pressure. So they'll burn themselves out to stay consistent. So they'll just feel like a total utter failure if they take one thing out of their routine. So like, let's say like, you know, an indigo aura has, uh, like, it's like, this is me, like a, a virus and doesn't feel good. But your seven year old daughter is like, can you please take me to ballet? And I'm like, I'm really sick. And then she's like, but I only want you there. I don't want daddy to take me. And I feel like a horrible parent. I'm like, oh my God, I'm disappointing her. I'm not taking her, you know, and there's an outside of me that's like, Megan, that's silly. It's okay. He can take her this time. But then there's an inside part of me that is indigo and is like, oh my God, I've just hurt my child. You know, she'll remember this forever. So it, it can be hard. It can be hard with indigos. They'll make themselves stay consistent even when it doesn't make sense because they guilt themselves into it. Vicarious living you know, be good, stay under the radar. Because if you're under the radar, then I don't have to be, nobody calls me and I don't have to like deal with it. And then I don't get attention and then I feel more comfortable. So that can be damaging Um, for everybody. Triggers, like their kid gets bullied, mistreated, not heard, hurt, doesn't speak up. These things can really trigger, trigger the indigos. All right. Yes, I did do turquoise and pink. Turquoise parents, you know, I just don't see a ton of turquoise parents. Um, but from what I have seen, this is what I see. With respect. With, oh, so turquoise is, you know, they're very floaty. They're very much like barometers of other people's energy. They're very, they're very sensitive to everything that's going on around them. Okay, so if you're a turquoise parent, it's, it's a very mutual respect thing. Like, hey, your feelings matter, but my feelings matter too. You know, so it's, I feel like turquoise parents really humanize themselves the best to their children. Like, hey, I'm a person too, man. Okay. So they don't always pull the authority card. They pull the, hey, I'm, I'm a person too card. So it's kind of like teaching them respect for me the way I respect you. Kind of like this universal energy, I think, because turquoises are so used to being kind of not seen or cast aside or or not included, they're really big with respect, making sure their kids include, you know, notice, notice. When you live on the fringe energetically, like turquoises do, they really are sensitive to being put kind of on the sidelines of things. So they're good at, I guess, humanizing themselves for their children. So that's a big thing with respect. Control. Hey, I see this with turquoises. They're very firm, okay? They're kind of firm parents. They will feel very much correct in what they say, and, you know, that's the way it is. Like, they, they, they kind of put their foot down in a good way. Discipline. We're going to talk about this. I'll be right. I'll be the correct one because I'm the parent. But I'll listen to what you have to say. You know, I'll validate you, but we're still going to probably do it my way. But I'll listen. They're kind of they're, they're good like that. Motivation. They're really into their kids' self-expression. So they might push their kids to try way more new things and odd things and interesting things and kind of off-brand things that other parents 
you know, wouldn't do like, hey, I'm going to put you in a crocheting class and then we're going to do surf camp and then we're going to, I don't know, learn how to paint on sidewalk chalk art. <laughs> they kind of do like all sorts of weird things. Um, and that's fine. They, it, and what's interesting is they're pretty consistent. Their consistency is they're very consistent, but they're very much involved. So if they're sending their kid off to play group, I, they'll play with their kid or a lot of us, like, we go to these, a lot of aura colors take your kids somewhere, and you're like, okay, go play. Well, turquoises will play with you. Like, the turquoise parents, they're like, all right, let's go. What are we doing? I'll take the crochet class with you. Let's do it. You know, I'm taking surf camp, too. Let's go. You know, so they, they're very involved that way. They're very consistent. They'll, they do what they say they will. Vicarious living, you know, because turquoises have this thing, they really want to feel accepted, They'll push their kids to try like a lot of different stuff and hang out with a lot of different types of people and groups. Um, they kind of want to be their kid's best friend. It's like, hey, I've never been really excited. Sometimes when a turquoise aura has a kid, that's the first time they've ever felt seen and accepted because that's what your kid will do for you, obviously. So they can sometimes latch onto that and be like, okay, what are we doing next? And it's like, okay, you know, sometimes your kid has to go do their own thing, you know? Triggers being cast aside or not needed. So what happens when kids grow up? They don't need you as much anymore. And that's that can be taken by a lot of us, but by turquoises I see as some sort of abandonment. And it's not. It's you did a good job. I sh am going to be the biggest one crying. So I'm just telling you what I get <laughs> from, from spirit, not what I'm um, probably my own experiences. Finally, pink. I don't see a ton of pink parents, but some of you are pink parents and you are fun. I will say this about pink parents, though. Pink auras, I mean, the, pink auras, yes. Do they have some sort of Barbie princess vibe? Peter Pan vibe if you're a guy? Absolutely. Are they stubborn? They sure are. They, they are not, you don't play with a pink. It will not play back with you. You know, it's funny. I don't know if you guys remember. I'm sure you do. Brittany, I don't know, who released, I think her ex- released um audio her kids Britney Spears's kids took over like disciplining them and it just backfired Kevin Federline it just backfired because everyone's like okay like she was just disciplining her kids <laughs> like you know it's fine but the way she was doing it is so pink aura they will put their foot down so pink aura is respect hey be respectful of you know pink auras do things for you they, they provide experiences for you. They try to make your life nice. They try to make your life magical. They try, to, they try to be thoughtful. But a form of respect is, hey, notice that I did that and appreciate it out loud to me. Okay? Like they are very like, I did this and you're going to tell me that you liked it. And you're going to, uh, you know, acknowledge that I did that for you. Controls with pink auras, like, hey, I put my foot down. You're in my world. Okay? You're going to be kind. You're going to listen to me. Like I said, pinks don't play. They're, they're, they're kind of consistent in that way. Discipline. They do talk. They can lecture a little bit. <laughs> they, can, they can go on a little tangent. Think of like when you're like a three-year-old doesn't get her way. And she's just like, and let me tell you, da, 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 and they kind of go off. You don't always understand them, but they're telling you what's up. They're like, and then you did this, and then you did this, and then this happened. Pink auras can be like that a little bit as parents. But they're very clear about what they find acceptable and what's not. Your motivation, oh, let's have fun. Let's have a good time. Let's make memories together. Let's do this together. Let's co-create. Consistency. You know, pinks can be a little bit like yellow auras. They definitely have a vision. And they're definitely very clear on what's acceptable or not in their vision. Um, so I would say that they're pretty consistent when they want to be. But then other times they can just be like, eh, I don't care today. Pancakes for, for dinner. Like they don't, you know, depends. Um, vicarious living, they can kind of push on their kids a little bit to be fancy or have fun with what I have fun. And right now we're, we're, we're enjoying things. You're not allowed to be sad. So they can kind of be a little bit push their escapism agenda on the kids and triggers. It definitely like when their kids are dismissed or teased or made fun of, I mean, they can't handle that because that's just their whole life. They've been experiencing that. So that can be a huge trigger for them. And when they're adults and they have a bigger voice, they can get very upset. They can get very upset. And they should. Okay. So that is my parenting. That was really long. <laughs> very long. In aura color. I hope that helped. 
And I hope that cleared some stuff up for you and gave you some insight and new perspectives. Hey, Big Cheese. <laughs> Is that, that's how we're going to start now? <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. So, look, I mean, threw a lot of information at you. Yeah, today. that was a lot. Sorry. That's a lot. You know, <laughs> I could have gone longer, too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you were... You know, you were recording that. I'm just like, oh my god, this is going. It's like, like I can't stop. Like it's so much. Yeah. So maybe you take a couple of days to, and which I think a lot of people do do do. They listen to the episodes, yeah, over a couple of days. But like, I mean, there's only one conclusion for me here is like, if you're having problems parenting, just watch Gilmore Girls with your kids. I'm that's calling. That, that's uh, that's my advice. Okay. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I mean, uh, should I set you up for a Gilmore Girls red rant to close this off? I, I mean, I. I've gone the whole episode without red ranting, although you had the majority of the the episode That's today. True. But uh, all right, set me up. Let, let's just overtime it. Overtime. Overtime. It. Overtime. You may go now, all right, give unless me, set, you want to hear a Gilmore Girls red rant. Give me a Gilmore. Set me up for a Gilmore Girls red all rant. All right, Luke never had lobster. Go. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you don't know, season six. Are you? See, on? Yeah, I'm in end of season six. Okay. So I think yeah, see, like episode sixteen. Okay. Maybe. Just okay. If you never watched this show, which probably most of you haven't. But I don't know if we have a lot of Gilmore Girl fans here. Luke owns a diner in New England, in Connecticut, pretty close to the beach. Okay, I don't know how far from the beach, but pretty close to the beach. In he's forty five years old, roughly. He goes on a double date with Lorelai, which is his fiance's kid and her boyfriend, and he has lobster. Claims to have lobster for the first time. He's like he never had lobster before. Okay. What are the odds of this? Now, think about this. You don't have to watch the show. This is a 45-year-old man, lives in New England. Hold on, let me finish this. Don't, 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 don't. He lives in New England, okay? He owns a diner. You're telling me he never had a lobster roll? What diner owner in New England has never had a lobster roll at 45? I just wanted to say this is season six, episode yeah. 15 of Vineyard Valentine. Okay, please watch this episode. It's also, hold on. It's yeah. February. Go. Yes, it's also February. <laughs> it's the dead of winter. They're eating outside. No jackets, no hats. In Massachusetts. It, all the leaves are on the trees. <laughs> the sun's out. Does not make sense. In Martha's Vineyard. Okay. I, I'm, just end this. Okay. Because, all right. <laughs> this podcast is for you and about you and for Gilmore Girl Rants. <laughs> We're so glad. It is, and by the way, it's a fan. It's the best show. It's the best show. <laughs> you like, love it. It's so horrible. Horrible <laughs> that it becomes the best. We're so glad you spent some time with us today. <laughs>